Our application is the completion and analysis of Punnett squares for dihybrid traits. So the example we're going to move through here is a dihybrid genetic cross involving two traits. One of them is going to be tongue rolling, whereby the ability to do so is dominant to not being able to tongue roll. And then we're also going to look at earlobes. So a free hanging earlobe that you can see in the middle image is dominant to an attached earlobe that you can see on the right hand image. And you can see the alleles allocated to this tongue rollings are T, capital T or capital letter is always the dominant one. And then the B is going to be for the earlobes. So the genes for the tongue rolling and the earlobes are unlinked. So the dihybrid cross we're going to do is for unlinked genes. Therefore, they are found on different chromosomes, as illustrated by the image at the bottom. So we will do a cross with one that is a tongue roller, heterozygous for that. So that's uppercase T, lowercase T. And they have free hanging earlobes. They're also heterozygous for that. So it's uppercase B, lowercase B. On the right hand side, this person is going to be a tongue roller, again heterozygous, uppercase T, lowercase t, and they will have attached earlobes, meaning that they must be homozygous recessive, lowercase b, lowercase b. So, since they are un unlinked, these genes, they are on different pairs of chromosomes. So I'll illustrate this here, and I strongly encourage you when you're doing your dihybrid crosses to draw a diagram out like this so you can really visualize where the genes are. Now, if we take a look first on the left hand side, note that the gene for the tongue rolling on the top pair of chromosomes, you have the dominant allele on the left and the recessive on the right, uppercase T on the left, lowercase T on the right. And beneath that on the second pair of chromosomes, the other pair because they are unlinked, you have the lowercase b on the left, uppercase b on the right. Now, I note here, and I'm going to come back to this, that that doesn't have to be the case necessarily. We'll come back to that in a moment. On the right-hand side, you can see the similar arrangement of alleles for tongue rolling. And underneath that, it doesn't really matter which way you put them around. Both of the alleles are recessive for the earlobes. So... If you lay them out as so, um, the homologous pairs are separated during meiosis in order to form gametes. This is the same as every time we have done this during monohybrid crosses, hence the line down the middle. So as they are currently arranged, the following gametes would be produced. On the left hand side for this person, if you were to separate those homologous pairs, one of them would have an uppercase T and a lowercase b. The other would have a lowercase b. T uppercase B. On the right hand side you would have two gametes, an uppercase T lowercase B and a lowercase T lowercase B. However, I want to revisit this issue on the left hand side here because that arrangement doesn't necessarily have to be so. You could actually have arranged them the other way around because independent assortment can occur if these genes are unlinked. Therefore, there are two more possible gametes for this person on the left-hand side. They could also have an uppercase T, uppercase B, and a lowercase t, lowercase b. Now, independent assortment is not limited to the left-hand person. It could also happen in the person on the right. But notice that if you do that, because they are homozygous recessive for their earlobes, even if you independently assort, you're going to end up with the same gamete. So now if we take these gametes and we put them into a Punnett square like so, then what we would do is we put the alleles together inside that Punnett square. And there are a few pieces of advice I have for you here. Keep your alleles together for a given gene. So notice in the first offspring, top left-hand column, uppercase T, uppercase T, uppercase B, uppercase B, Notice that the gene for the tongue rolling, the uppercase T, uppercase T, is put before that for the earlobes, the B. And that is maintained throughout. It's going to make it a lot easier for you to analyze your genotype and phenotype ratios. In addition, please be consistent and disciplined by always putting your dominant allele, your uppercase letter, in front of your lowercase letter. So notice 
in some of these genotypes, we have uppercase T, lowercase T, followed by uppercase B, lowercase B. So we always put our dominant allele in front of our recessive for a given gene. So now that we have the Punnett square, you can imagine that doing the genotype and phenotype ratios for a dihybrid cross like this is a little bit more complicated because when you report your phenotype in particular, you will need to report that for two different traits. So the genotype ratio, you can go through and work this through. You can end up with a percentage. Of course, ultimately, it should add up to 100%. So initially, the ratio is out of eight, but then I converted that to a percentage. But your interpretation must be based on the two traits provided. So when you refer to an individual from the offspring, you must say whether or not they are a tongue roller and whether or not they have attached or free hanging earlobes. And that is the primary difference with a dihybrid cross phenotypic ratio.